He was on the Chris Collinsworth podcast recently, and he made some pretty revelatory statements about you know the way he's approaching quarterback here uh, with the Washington football team. And I know that Collinsworth asked him if he was willing to move up in the draft, if that was something that was discussed with the staff. And we have some audio of Ron on with Chris Collinsworth. Such an interesting year. We saw Tyler Heineke. We saw so many different people. Dwayne Haskins, you let go. A lot of people thought this year might be a, a year that, uh, despite the fact that you signed Ryan Fitzpatrick, that you might have made a move in the draft and you know come up and taken one of those five quarterbacks that everybody was talking about. Mm-hmm. Did you consider that at all? Oh, yes. Oh, we did. We did, Chris. We really did. But the, the thing also that stuck out in our mind is, is that the amount of draft capital, the price that we were going to have to, pl- to pay to, to try and get the, the right one, the one we liked the most. That was hard because we're looking at our team saying, God, we need a linebacker. We need a left tackle, you know, we, we, you know for the future. We, we, we need, you know, so many other things that just getting the one guy might not have put us in that position. Now, with what we've done, you know, we, we, we secured some of our positions. We feel good about some of the positions uh, and, the, and the rest of the team. And I'll, I'll say this. This was one of the things that we talked about, too, was other than Tom Brady, who's won multiple? You know, well, you can say Peyton. You can say Eli. But then who else? You know, you look at the other guys that have won them. There are a lot of one-timers. And, and what do those one-timers have in, com- in, in common? Well, you know, they're, they're guys that were very efficient. They managed the game. They didn't turn it over a lot. And they made plays when they had to. So we're, we're just wondering, if, is, is, is that the other formula? If you're fortunate enough to find this guy, you ride him. But if you don't and you find these guys, what says you can't win with them? Other than Tom Brady, think about this. Like, so we, we went through that back and forth. Now, I'm not saying that if, if, if the right guy in our mind is there, that we don't ride with him. So we'll see. All right, here's the thing. I, I, what he's basically saying is if you don't have one of the unicorns, then he thinks you could still win. He's a little, and I do think there's some truth to it, but he's overstating the one-timers as like they're all Trent Dilfers. They're, they're all not, Hall of Famers. The one-timers, they're not all. But well, the, one, the one-timers are Roethlisberger, or, or he, I don't even think he is, like Breeze, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he won too. Um, you know, Mahomes. I mean, these are great players. But to his defense, and I don't think he articulated it well, since 2000, and this is what they're obviously going for, Trent Dilfer's won a Super Bowl. Brad Johnson's won a Super Bowl. Joe Flacco's won a Super Bowl. Nick Foles has won a Super Bowl. So, you know, that's like a one in five shot. <laughs> you know, one in four shot, something like that. But in terms of the winners of late, uh, you know, 25% of them or 20% of them have been th- that kind of player. So he's just trying to justify that. But Flacco, look, Flacco had a great run in the postseason. And so his, did Foles, all those guys played his, well. I'm just saying for his career, his postseason numbers are pretty damn good. Listen, you can make it. I excuse. don't see those guys as stop gaps. I mean, a couple of those guys were, but. I, 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 I do. I see Dilfer, Johnson, Flacco. Foles, Foles. yes. They're, they're kind of like journeymen. They become journeymen. They, they are. Yeah, Brad Johnson had they a. They all had their moments. He had a pretty good career. I mean, if you look at those type of quarterbacks. They're not like the others, Jason. Right. If you look at those type of quarterbacks that won, it's, it's five out of 50. But I'm just saying the last 20 years, those guys have. That's actually factual, right? Since, they have. Since, 20, since 21 years. So, or 20, actually. because Maybe 21 Super Bowls. But what I'm know. saying to you is those guys were on a different level than what you have now. Well, Flac- I, no, Flacco I Fitz, when he won, Flacco when he won, so much better than Fitz. Maybe now. I think Fitz is equivalent to Dilfer, Johnson. Flacco was playing great, and Foles was playing great at the time. But I think he's equivalent to them overall. I actually do. I, so, I disagree, but okay. Yeah. So if and, you won't, maybe Dilfer, and I think he's probably thinking, better than Dilfer. And Brad but, Johnson but Dilfer, was greatly diminished when he Dilfer won. But Dilfer had the best defense in the history of the world. Understood. They think they have a great defense. They think they could build around. Now, it's more of a long shot, but I understand what he's saying. I, I, I think they have a shot to have a nice winning record, and who knows what could happen in the playoffs. If you want to weigh in on an open mm-hmm. line Thursday, do you, do you dovetail with Coach Rivera's thought that you can, you can kind of piecemeal it together as long as you build the rest of the team up around the quarterback? 800-636-1067 is the number, and – 
I'm getting more convinced. I'm convincing myself more than ever that, especially if Ron is here for the entire five years of his contract, mm-hmm. that I don't know that they're going to take that bite of the apple of the first round quarterback, especially if they, you know, if they win nine or ten games and they're picking in the in the twenty range. You're not generally going to get a quarterback there that's go- going to transform your franchise. Because you look at what's happened already. Year one's in the books for Rivera with the trash of Palooza at quarterback, <laughs> playing four different guys at quarterback. Year two is going to be Fitz, and I think if Fitz plays well, year three is going to be Fitz. I agree So with then that. you're three years in already to a five-year deal. And unless you think he's going to be the next Belichick or Mike Tomlin, uh, a guy who's going to be someplace for a decade plus, I mean, Ron is what fifty nine now. By the end of his deal, he's sixty two, sixty three. Is he gonna is mm. he gonna sign up for another few years if things go well here? He might. I would guess he might that he not. would want to. Maybe, Maybe guess he said he would want to. But here's my thing: I do think he's kind of speaking out of both sides of his mouth because he's kind of defending their position, right? Mm-hmm. Defending their position that you can do it this way. You can do yeah. it by addressing other needs, and you don't have to have the best quarterback in the league. You don't have to have Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he's admitting we were looking for that guy, but they basically did a cost-benefit analysis, their own determination. They felt like the cost to move up and get a Justin Fields, too great. Right, and but so isn't they that decided fair? to go this way. But isn't that fair? What are you yeah, saying? Yeah, it's fair. Totally fair. And he's being totally transparent in that sense. Well, we it also it tells me it. that they didn't love him enough to make that deal. Sure. There's something about that guy they didn't love because they could have made the deal. What did what did uh, Chicago give up? The first and was it a fourth? A fourth or a fifth, I believe. I can double check the the deal. You there. wouldn't give up a first rounder and a fourth rounder for your quarterback of the future. No, I think you're right. That's not the guy that they necessarily wanted. You know, we'll see if fits fits into the equation because what Rivera said at the end of the audio we played is that he's looking for a guy who's efficient, right? That managed the game that didn't turn it over a lot. And that's been the bugaboo with Fitz at times. He's gotten better, but at other times, he's been a turnover machine. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what are you going to get from Fitzpatrick this year? Because Rivera believes you can have a quarterback who can manage a game, don't commit too much turnovers, don't commit many turnovers, and then you're going to be in games. It actually sounds like he's talking about Alex Smith because that's really what Alex Smith was. Game manager, no turnovers. If he thinks that Fitz is Alex Smith, which I know he doesn't, then he's got another thing coming. Because oh, Fitz is not Alex Smith. But he I'm knows. just saying, doesn't Alex Smith fit that description of what Rivera said? He said, one-timers have this in common. They're guys that were very efficient. They managed the game. They didn't turn it over a lot. And they made plays when they had to. Well, here's the other thing about throwing the, the Nick Foles in there. Nick Foles, when he won, he, didn't, he wasn't the quarterback the entire year. He played two or three games in the regular season. Carson Wentz was the quarterback, and he got hurt. Am I wrong about that? Don't I have the same – is that the same year? Which year? When, the, when yeah, Foles yeah. won the Super Bowl. He just got hot late. He was not the starting quarterback. For Carson Wentz the was the quarterback. Yeah, I think it was like game 13 or something. I can't remember what right. exactly and Car- it was. And Carson Wentz was their starter, right? and he, they had a great year under Wentz, then he got hurt. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's kind of similar. So that's thing kind that of a misnomer. He just got hot in the postseason. He got hot in the postseason. But the fact is he did it. He pulled it off. So I, listen, yeah. I think that that Ron is overstating how you know how often it happens, or that, that the one timers are like some sort of like one offs because the mm-hmm. one timers, a lot of them, like Russell Wilson, they're, he's a great go, player. Well, I mean, they're, Pat, yeah, they're going to go to the Hall of Fame. Well, that's what I was saying. They're right, going I Hall agree of Fame, with yeah. you hundred percent. But I do think there is some validity that you can find lightning in a bottle every once in a while if the rest of the team is special and you get good play from your guy. So I, I personally don't think that Ryan Fitzpatrick is any worse than Trent Dilfer or any worse than Brad Johnson. And I understand Flacco's had moments, but I think overall he's no worse. In fact, I think he's better than Flacco, certainly at this point. And then Foles, same thing. So those guys have won him before. If you catch lightning in a bottle, maybe you – I don't think it's – So you want to catch lightning. So that's what, you're, that's what you're banking on, catching lightning in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, well, no. Which is easy to do. Yeah, that's I mean, what you just said. It's not easy to do. It's, it's very hard. I'm saying it's very hard. Yeah, I mean, you, but I'm saying it's not impossible. Ninety-five percent of the quarterbacks who have won Super Bowls are were considered the best in the game, or they're going. But to in Hall the fame. last twenty years, I just gave you four 
that weren't. So All that's right. one in, what is that, JPP? What is that, one in five? Four, right, 20%. That's 20% haven't been that. I know. So I'm just telling you. I just uh, think uh, a couple of those guys were better than what you have now. Okay, I disagree. I don't think Trent And one Dillard of those guys better. won it, but wasn't the starting quarterback for 90% of the Right, year. I'm familiar with that. I mean, Doug Williams did the same thing here yeah. in D.C. Uh, but Doug Williams gets credit for it. Foles gets credit for it. I just look at the last 15. I know you go back to 20 because you're adding Johnson and, and Dilford, but the last 15 has been Brady, Roethlisberger, both Mannings, Breeze, Rodgers, right. and I don't think, by the way, Wilson, Brady, Mann. I mean, you I know, agree. the best ever. No, I don't put Eli in that conversation. He, well, he is one I almost mentioned, but I didn't feel like arguing it. But I yeah. think Eli is very average over you're, his career. So. You're, hold on, you're putting... Eli Manning and Ryan Fitzpatrick's category? No, I think Eli Manning's more accomplished. He's won two Super Bowls. I tip my I mean, cap it's not even I close. Been, I think he's very average. That's just my opinion of Eli. I mean, he won two Super Bowls, bro. He does. He did. He gets credit. So, so I didn't even want anyway. to bring that up. But I think he, he overall was a very average quarterback. He might go to the Hall of Fame. I doubt it. He might. I understand. He, but he's certainly listen, in the discussion. If you want to die on that mountain and you think Eli's some great quarterback, I don't think he is. I'm saying that I would take Eli – hold on. I would take Eli Manning over Fitz 12 times out of 10. Okay. Sure. Am I, am I on another planet when I say that? Come on. I don't think he was that great. I think he won two Super Bowls. Oh, Okay. I think he yes, won two he Super did. Bowls. He did win two Super Bowls. I mean, to, That's pretty to good. Kind I mean, Jim, of side Jim on Plunkett, EB's side. Did Jim Puckett win two Super Bowls or one? I thought he won two, but maybe it was a I think he won a, There might have been one. He won a couple, I can't I remember. But Eli's career passer rating, 84.1. Fitzpatrick's, 82.3. Not a lot of separation there. Well, if you're gonna Eli's compare. completion percentage career, 60.3. Fitzpatrick, 60.7. Now, if you look at touchdown-interception ratio, it's going to be better on Eli's side, 366 to 244. Fitzpatrick, uh, 223 to 169. That doesn't sound that far off, actually. He just got more starts. Well, of course, I mean, because he was better. Well, he also is a four-time Pro Bowler. I know that we diminished the Pro Bowl. That makes sense. He was a four-time Pro Bowler, Fitzpatrick, zero. You know, yeah. We'll take your calls, 800-636-1067 on an open line Thursday. Do you agree with Ron Rivera's statements about building up the quarterback spot here in Washington? You don't necessarily have to do it with the first rounder. They're doing it with Fitz. Do you agree with that approach? 800-636-1067. We'll be right back.